Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Ask the Expert. Today's conversation will focus on a very important topic. In fact, it's the raison d'etre of Youth America Grand Prix. It's the reason why uh, students uh, come to, to this um, largest scholarship audition in the world. And this topic is scholarships, but not just scholarships. We're going to talk about the etiquette of receiving scholarships. So at Youth America Grand Prix, we have a very uh, specific process. We'll talk about it. But before we do, I would like to introduce our experts, plural, today. They are Cynthia Harvey, who you know as the prima ballerina of uh, the American Ballet Theater and the Royal Ballet. Her latest role is the artistic director of Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis School at American Ballet Theater. Our other expert is Peter Stark, who actually has been involved with Youth America Grand Prix as a jury member. Uh, well, before he was a jury member, he was a teacher bringing students to Youth America Grand Prix since the very beginning, in fact. Uh, then he became the artistic director of, uh, um, of Orlando Ballet School. Then he became the founding director of, uh, of another company, the Patel Conservatory. And currently, he's starring in the role of the uh, artistic director of uh, uh, Boston Ballet 2. So these are our experts, and uh, thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. So Peter, you've been with us from the beginning, both as a teacher and a scholarship presenter. Cynthia, you've been with us for three years. Uh, so, so lots of wealth of perspective and uh, knowledge of both institution of Youth America Grand Prix and your uh, respective institutions. I think uh, a good place for us to start would be just by reviewing the basics. How are scholarships offered at YAGP? Well, when you apply to participate in Youth America Grand Prix, they actually ask you what schools you're interested in. And all of the judges that will be present are listed on a sheet, and you can mark. I'm very interested in American Ballet Theater, very interested in Boston Ballet, and you can mark several down the list. Once you arrive at the competition, um, while you're dancing both uh, on stage and in class, you're being observed by the judges, and then they start to take their own notes, and you'll actually get a letter, and it's a you've got mail, um, that might say, Boston is very interested in you, you know, do you reciprocate this interest? Um, and there are, there are a variety of ways to do that. Your teacher or your parent can speak to a representative from YGP and say, you know what, this is not a right match. We don't want to send our child overseas. Or yes, we are very interested. Can we find out more information? Um, if you are interested, and it does seem to be a match, and there could be a few of those, you could be three or four schools that are interested in one student, there's actually a wonderful opportunity to sit down with a representative from the school one-on-one -on -one where you can ask specific questions. And um, because of that, you should really do your homework prior to getting to the competition um, to the schools that you're interested in, and maybe even some that you don't think you're interested in, but you may have an offer for anyway to find out you know, what kind of performing opportunities they have. What's their day look like? Is there a dormitory? Is there an academic component? Um, what are the minimum age requirements, both on the bottom and the top? Because sometimes people can age out from, from some programs. Um, so have your questions ready. And then, if everything is aligned, you'll have your offers, you'll have the information you need, and you can hopefully accept an offer and change your life. Now, the key uh, part of it, and in fact, the, the main reason for our conversation today is that often it happens that people get more than one offer. Uh, dancers may be interested and receive interest from more than one institution. At that point, they will be asked to choose. And, uh, for, and I know for you also, Cynthia, you, you have like a list of your top candidates, but if yes. forever, for any reason that match doesn't happen, and if you have, and correct me if I'm wrong, like you have a certain number of spots. It's always the case. You often know how many available spots that you have for females and how many for males. Um, whether that child needs a dormitory, if I have a spot in the dormitory, it depends on how many students stay or who have aged out. So you know, as a director, we know before we go precisely how many. We don't know who's going to stay on necessarily or who will decide to move on or maybe you know, their life changes and they don't want to continue dancing. So there are a lot of variables, but we take all that into consideration and we generally know in advance of the situation before we get there. So you have, let's say, three boys and two girls. Yes. Like you have those five spots that you need to fill and you come yes. to Youth America Grand Prix hoping to fill those spots with exactly. dancers who you think will do well at the school and who are hopefully interested. And who are suitable or who we see in such a short week, uh, right. you know, a similarity to the dancers. For me, it's for the company. 
I'm always looking for what the company is looking for. But at the same time, if they only take a certain amount of dancers into the company a year, then it's our obligation and duty to provide them other opportunities. So, you know, it's a constant um, process. Right, and, and you're, just so that I think, uh, so that our uh, viewers understand, like your position is actually quite stressful because you have funding for a certain yes. number of spots and you have to make sure, to, you know, so somebody generously gave money or foundation or the, the ABT, the organization, has allotted a certain amount of money for these scholarships and, you know, you have an obligation to fill them. So you're working very hard in that week. Oh, definitely, there's that consideration. I'm... <laughs> I am the rebel saying if there's a student that I think is super great and even if we are told we don't have the budget, I will go out and look for it because I don't want to give up on a dancer right. who perhaps is interested in us. Uh, but there is etiquette to go with that. Right. So that, that's exactly what, what, what I'm hoping to uh, sort of unpack a little bit for our uh, participants is that um, so you have your five spots. You, find, you, know, you approach your five students. You talk to them. Uh, they say yes. And so then at, at a certain point, um, if anything happens um, with any of these five students, say maybe it's an injury, maybe it's a, you know, uh, family circumstances, if a spot, you know, if one of the five people can't fulfill that commitment that they made to you, to, to the American Ballet Theater School, uh, what happens then? Do you go to the next person on the list? Do you have like a backup list? Sometimes we do. Sometimes I have other people in mind. Um, you know, we have several programs during the year that we also look at other students. And so, you know, we're not only leaving that, but I would love a, a note. What I would like would be, I'm sorry we're not able to take the offer or thank you, first of all, for the offer, because sometimes we don't even get the thank you. See, that's, that's interesting because, you know, you, you kind of think, wow, it's a gift, right? Scholarship is a, is a chance to attend mm -hmm. a school for free, sometimes even with extra money, you know, that, that you get a stipend or you get uh, living accommodations. And, you know, the art of... So is thank you uh, really important? For me, it is. It's first <laughs> it is. and foremost. I mean, polite uh, respect of the institution, of the fact that, you know, maybe you've been offered 10 scholarships. Each one of us who have offered the scholarships are important in that we care about our dancers and our schools and companies. So the least one can do is say thank you for that. You don't have to go into huge editorial comments about why you may not be able to accept the scholarship. I just would like, thank you, I'm not able to do it. But once I've started applying for a visa, once I've already paid for the dorms, because we pay for the dorms in advance, then it's hard. It's tough if they pull out at that point to go somewhere else. You know, so. we understand everybody's entitled, and I have a feeling is, you know, if I've approached a dancer and then they change their mind and they decide they want to come to me instead of some other school. I pick up the phone and I call the other director because I right. feel that our relationship is also important. So I think this is a topic that we will come back to again and again in this conversation and in, in, in life that, that the dance world is actually quite a small world and uh, how you comport yourself in that world is very important and you start uh, comporting yourself in that world from an early age say from when you're offered a scholarship so and you, what you're saying is you will actually remember people oh. who've graciously written a note either thank you i'm excited to come or thank you but i can't mm -hmm. so you, it matters to you does it matter to you Peter? well it does and actually in my role i i have a role with boston ballet school and with boston ballet company right. so sometimes a student might say no to a school scholarship and then be auditioning for a company or a second right. company position a year or two later so how they handle themselves in the first instance could very well affect, <laughs> affect how we handle ourselves when they're looking for a job later on. Yeah. Do you actually remember, do you remember, because you have so oh, many students, yeah. do you remember them? Oh, very much. Mm. Um, they're all unique. Yes. You do remember them. And, right. you know, it is a very small world. The ballet world is very small, and yeah. we directors know one another. So that's right. something else that they need to know is that, you know, sometimes after words over a cup of coffee, we'll speak. That dancer was, you know, wonderful, but last year I offered a scholarship to that dancer and they decided to go somewhere else and they never thanked me. You know, your ears perk up. You don't want to judge them necessarily by someone else's experience, but you can't help but, or you can't erase what you've heard or what you've seen. Well, not only do we all know each other, but we move around. Um, yes. right. Sometimes it's well, you interesting did. Perfect musical example. chairs of this, yeah, in my, my, you know, I've had three roles, but, but so many of my colleagues have had multiple roles in multiple different organizations. So sometimes, um, 
you know, somebody might say no to a director in Florida, and then that person all of a sudden is associated with San Francisco Ballet, and that's their dream company. Right. Um, so you, you want to be nice to everybody up and down the chain. <laughs> no, they say you, 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 you see the bridges. same people on the way up as you see on the way down. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, and, and it's true, because, like, look at you. You know, you, you, you were a teacher. You were, uh, mm -hmm. you know, at Orlando Ballet. Now you're Boston. So, so these are, you are a perfect example of, um, a, you know, mm -hmm. how, just how fluid and how small this uh, dance world is. So let's, okay, so we, um, you know, if we go on with the, with the process of, you know, the scholarship etiquette, right? So you have your five dancers, you've um, um, made the commitment to them, they made a commitment to you. For some reason, one spot becomes available. Do you then, after the scholarships have been announced, do you then contact the next person on your list? How, what, what do you do as an institution? Yes, sometimes I will contact that person on the list. In between, you never know who you're going to see. So it depends on who you're going to see, you know, from the time that they said no to the next summer intensive. So right. we see people during the summer intensive, and often during our summer intensives, we'll, we'll take some, another dancer on. Um, you know, we always suggest that people, when you make your commitment, you know, that's it. We'd like it to be a solid commitment. That's why doing your homework ahead of time, mm -hmm. Finding out about the school or company you're choosing to go to is hugely important. And actually, the schools that have a company associated, that's the other aspect to me. You know, you may think that the teachers at the school are fantastic, but if you actually want to just, you know, our, let's say our school, for example, we have great teachers, but they really want to join Stuttgart Ballet, I can't say no to that. If, if then they realize, oh, I don't really want to be at ABT, I want to be at Stuttgart, so they'll go to Stuttgart instead of us. So yes, I'll look at my next, my next on my list. Um, and then you, you look at that against the people you have chosen. And you know, if there is pluses and minuses to be had of all of them, you're, you're going to take the next best. It's like be, choosing your doctor. You don't just go to the junior doctor if the fully qualified doctor right. is available. You know, I will always want the best one. <laughs> of course, and everybody does. And so it's an interesting dance, right? Because your real commitment is to get the best for ABT, you know, and so, but at a certain point, you know that, um, you know, people have made commi commitments elsewhere. So is there a cutoff point? Is there like a grace period that you think is okay to reach out to dancers beyond which you'd be like, you know, even if that's a great dancer, I will not contact them because they've, I don't want to mess up their commitment to somewhere else. I just want to jump in for one second. One of the things I love about dance in America is that we have so many exceptions to the rules. Right. With our body types, with the age that we start, mm -hmm. with how we train, where we train, um, there's, there's each training facility in America is sort of unique, and we are open to sort of that American experience. And I think that's something unique about our American schools versus yes. some of our European colleagues, where you have to be a certain age and a certain body type um, entering in a specific level we tend to be a little bit more fluid, which gives us some freedom to say, you know what, he's a little old, but I see the will there and the drive, I'm gonna give that kid a chance. Right. Well, that, that's a great point, by the way, because you know American versus European uh, education systems, and they're much less able to um, be flexible with you know, going from one it's kid true. to another. And, and their cutoff date, because we're talking about Cut off. What after what period of time is it no longer okay and the, to 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 uh, for for another school to be like okay well we finally have a spot you know come come on in knowing that well the, the reason why I bring elsewhere. it up is because it's hard for us to some to answer some of these questions very specifically when right. you say what's the exact process when one says no and then you go to the second there's so many factors that come into our decision making. Um, but we are looking at human beings and we're trying to relate to them as human beings. Right. Which to your point again, Cynthia, really brings back to they need to act with integrity and as humans when they tell us that they're interested or they're not sure or they need more information. Because to make a promise that they don't keep is actually, it's just, it, it, it's not appropriate, it's not professional, and it, it can harm them in the long run. I often have the other, the flip side of that coin where they say, I'm being pressured by X school to make a decision now. And I can't help them with that. I just can promote mm -hmm. what I do as That's a right. teacher, what my school does. I will 
never badmouth another school. So I would hope that they don't do it the other way around. You know? Well, in, in some ways, I can really see that situation because if I you know, want to go to ABT, but Boston is basically saying to me, well, now or never, you know, either go you know, take the spot now or we'll offer it to somebody else, and you're still making up your mind, what is a dancer to do in this situation? Well, I, I mean, I think each individual dancer has to make the decision that's best for them. And you know, I cannot have any clue as to whether or not in their family their situation is that the mom and dad will be empty nesters the minute that child leaves, that they no longer have the capacity to see their student. Their child lives in California, but they, they want to come to the East Coast. Uh, we, you get so many different situations, and we're such a vast country, uh, that you, you can only give them so much space, but our deadline usually is we wait till the end of sum summertime to make our decisions because we wait till our summer intensive students are, are finished. Wait, so, so basically ABT for a full year scholarship, and that's what we're focusing on, because you know, short study is a short study, but you know, things move in and out, you know, that, that's a less, less of a commitment, if you will, because you know, when you, we're talking about full year scholarships, right? So for your full year scholarships, you're waiting until when? Well, it depends. Usually what happens is for YAGP for us, we, I think we give them up to six weeks to make a decision. So each from which point? From the point of their acceptance at the finals. At in the New York. finals in New York, and then we have a summer intensive. And in our summer intensive, if we see a student and we know we still have a couple spots left, then we also do the same. We say you have to make a decision at, on a date, which is within between three and six weeks. Um, and those dates are pretty, pretty much set. I think we give six weeks for our YGP students, right. but that doesn't mean there's not room for adjusted and variable. Well, and going back to your original question, you said, so you have one, somebody's giving you an ultimatum, and yet you're interested in something else. One of the things that I think it's important for parents to realize is there's many paths to the top of the mountain. I mean, you're comparing Harvard to Yale. Look, they're right. both Ivy League. Right. Youth America Grand Prix is only aligning itself with the best schools in the country. So any of those and offers... And it, yeah, certainly, I meant to say internationally. Right. Yeah, but I mean, this, is the best the of the, this is the best of the best. So there's no wrong answer. And if you really feel compelled to make a decision, that's not going to be a bad decision. Mm -hmm. There are only good decisions here to be made. You know, it's again, which good decision do you want to make? And I feel like people shouldn't be as worried that they might be missing out on something else once they accept one of the tremendous offers that comes through this competition. It's one thing I would love to add about that, and you're absolutely right, it's a win-win situation. What I don't personally like, and this came as huge news to me when I came to these competitions, was students pitting, like, what can you give me more than, mm. this one's offered me this, can you give me more? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, don't, I can't do it unless you give me this, unless you give me this extra thing, or unless you give me one other thing. You know, you pay for my parents to come fly in and my teacher and, you know, what, when does that end? That's kind of a little upsetting for me. I find that, you know, it's not, you're not going to win if you pit the schools against each other because we're already there. I, I agree with you and, you know, I, but I also empathize with the parents if a parent right. thinks you know, I want the best for my kid. Um, and I feel like I will answer one email like that. So if they say to me, Royal Ballet School has offered tuition, schooling, and housing, and I say up front, we only do housing and tuition. Well, because and sometimes tuition, it's, it's something they have to consider, and, you know. Yeah, and that's, it but that's what yet, it is. But, but I don't want that conversation to go on an email chain, you know, no. back and forth six more times. Or the first time you meet the them, they start with that. Yeah. Right. That to me is, you know, Let's get further down the line before you start. Uh, right. you know, it, the market meet me at the marketplace of Youth America Grand Prix, right, and right, let's right. you know choose the commodity that's best. We know, and as a parent, I also know that I want my child to have the best opportunity. So do your homework. And sometimes there's ways of asking these questions without pitting the schools. Is yes. there an academic component? Yeah. Um, do you have housing on the weekends? So you can ask these questions without necessarily pitting the schools. Get the information you need, and then once you have the information, make the best decision at hand. 
So you know, one thing I've learned early on in life, you know, from parents and from my teachers is, is that it all comes down to, it's not what you do, but how you do it, right? So sometimes you have to say no. Sometimes you have to say yes, but then change your mind. Sometimes you have to, you know, just explain all sorts of situations. But if you communicate directly and honestly, if you approach the person respectfully and you give them the the respect of letting them know exactly what your situation is, you know, and, and sometimes like you were saying, sometimes people pit schools against each other, you know, it's not about, well, you know, he gives me this, what will you give me? You know, that's what kind of is rubbing you the wrong way. Uh, but But if they said, look, unfortunately, sadly, my child does not have the money to live on, is there any chance to have a stipend just so they can eat? You know, it's, it's, how, it's you how you say, say it, it, right? It's exactly how you say it, and, and with gratitude. Right. I mean, nobody, <laughs> least of all any of us, I think we are there, our jobs and our goals are to, you know, make their lives better too, right. and make them hopefully into human beings that are, you know, get the full learning experience. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing, you know, being grateful doesn't hurt. Right, and, 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 and you want to know their situation. And if their sure. situation is such that, help. you know, they are, I'm, I'm just kind of going off what you said, if, if, if they're a small child and, and if you're far away and if the family says, well, you know, our child has never been outside of home, is there any chance that the school might have some money for us to fly up to see the child for Christmas? I don't know, like even something like that, depending on how it's said, Yes. You are open to it, yes, right? Of course. It's of course, how yeah. you say it. You know, and some, sometimes you do go out of your way to do something that's not really written in what the brochure says because right. you're able to. So, but it is, as you say, how you, how you explain that instead of trying to pit schools against right. one another. Again, we speak to one another, we know. Right. Mm -hmm. See, that's, I think, something that people don't realize, uh, dancers don't realize, just how much the directors of all the schools are talking to each other. It's a great benefit, actually, of participating in Youth America Grand Prix as right. a judge is, is the networking opportunity that we all have with one another. Um, it, as, as much as we're looking for new talent and looking to fill our schools mm -hmm. and, and to offer these tremendous opportunities, we're also meeting each other sharing, and sharing concerns absolutely and stories about students <laughs> well, and, and, well and to they that come point, up sometimes yeah. yeah but sometimes also you know a, a student let's say is nervous between two schools they accept one and for whatever reason it might not be a match exactly. the school might actually say you know what we actually don't think you're a match or the student might say you know i don't like new york city it's too big of a city for let me, me recommend boston or Correct. Let, me, let me recommend another city i know the director let me put in a call absolutely and, we do right. that. and then right. you can go back to, you know, you offered me something two years ago. Is there still interest? Um, but again, if you handled yourself with integrity with the, with the school you turned down and you handled yourself with integrity with the school with which you were currently training, there still can be opportunities exactly to enter back again to a, uh, an organization that you had originally declined. Um, something else we were, we were talking um, earlier, and you said something very important, that um, the commitments you make... Uh, are actually quite finite. So, so there's an important aspect there. To, you can finish out your commitment before you go to the next. Talk about that. Well, you know, all of us who run schools, it's very typical. You know, generally students start around age seven and around 10 to 12, many children think, do I really want to do this? Do I want to give up band and the school play? Being and a cheerleader. <laughs> yeah, my fr Friday football games and so forth. And you know the, the child or the parent will come in mid-year and say, I'm thinking of quitting. And what I say is, finish your commitment. You started the year, finish this out, and then sometimes that just gets them over the hump, and then they continue on, and sometimes they do stop at the end of the year. But I think it's an important lesson to learn. You know, we are learning, we, once you learn to do one thing well, you can learn to do many things well. And ballet is a very sequential, slow, methodical process, and by finishing one commitment, I think has tremendous learning um, attributes for every aspect of your life. Well, as a, in both the dance training and in life training, right? Because uh, another thing we were talking about earlier is that there, is, there are more than one ways to get to your dream mm -hmm. you know, uh, situation in life. So if your dream is to be a prima ballerina in a, in a, in a big company, uh, well, first of all, there's a number of big companies and there's a number of ways to get there. So say somebody is in the middle of your school but then gets an offer midway, mm -hmm. somebody fell out, you know, and 
spot became available mid-year, well, so a dancer can, you know, not lose the relationship with you and you by saying, well, I got an offer from you, uh, it is the middle of the year, uh, I will finish my year here and yes. then I will accept your offer once I fulfill my commitment that I have made. And as a dancer, that goes a long way with all the people involved, correct? Well, I won't mention the name, but I did right. have a student that won the Grand Prix in New York. Right. And this individual was training in Boston, left Boston, came to me in Orlando. We worked together, went back to Boston, rose the ranks, became a principal dancer, left, joined uh, American Ballet Theater, became a principal dancer, and now left as a principal dancer in Europe. But has with all that moving, has always done so with integrity, with mm -hmm. timeliness, finishing the commitments at hand before jumping ship and doing yeah. something else. Mid-year is not always ideal. No, and, so and like you, you can say, do all sorts of things. It's just have to true. do it appropriately. And, and also, you know, commitment's a big deal in all aspects. If you take on tennis, you know, you, you've, you have to understand, as schools, we've already paid for, for your student, you know. As a school, I've paid for your head in my studio. So if you decide to quit in January, that was a half a year that I, I've lost that student spot. So you've paid for we've paid for a dorm or not. we've paid for you to be in that classroom and you're not there. So And somebody else it's was a loss. refused that yeah. opportunity because you expressed your interest That's and right. now they you're not using it and they're not getting it. So right? the commitment aspect is is important in terms of also, discipline. It's part of the discipline of being a dancer, Absolutely. I think. Absolutely. Um, follow through. Finish you know, one thing and, like you say, sequentially do things. It does apply to ballet. I mean, finish your it's, pirouettes, it's finish everything. your double tour. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. Finish your commitment. And, and, <laughs> your, and your solo, because that's exactly. what they remember is the ending. It's Don't true. run out <laughs> mid-variation, right? <laughs> have we ever considered that? <laughs> well, uh, but this is, a, you know, it's a great, uh, all these analogies, you know, as we sit here and talk about it, it, it seems very obvious to us, but apparently it's not obvious to a lot of people out there mm -hmm. because we see this movement and that's the reason for this session because, you know, so many people are confused. They think, oh, you know, my life will be over if I don't accept this one offer. And yes, it came in the middle of the year. And yes, I will. Mm -hmm. But that school will understand because this, after all, is my dream. That, that's what we hear so often is the, the parents understand because a lot of times parents are the ones who make mm -hmm. these uh, yes. choices yeah. for their kids. and. Any parent, you know, their one thing that they always say, and you can't argue with that, and they go like, well, there is nothing more important for me than the life of my child, than the dreams of my child, than the, the biggest desire my child has ever had, and this is the one way that this dream could be fulfilled. So, you know... But there is no one way. As I well, said, there are many paths the to the top of the mountain, and as again, every school that's all, that Youth America Grand Prix has aligned with internationally is outstanding. Right. So there's not a wrong choice. So A, you know, your dreams will, your, your child's dreams will not be crushed if they fulfill <laughs> their commitment and then review their options at the end of that Absolutely. year that they committed to, number one. Uh, number two, if you have to, if you've made that decision, be sure to comport yourself in such a way as to not burn bridges, as to actually explain your reasons and talk, involve both schools in a conversation. You know, because sometimes people think, oh, if we just somehow don't talk about it, it will not, you know, <laughs> hurt, well, and again, but it, it will. It applies to being a professional dancer. You know, in America, our union is the American Guild of Musical Artists, and there are timeline um, uh, guidelines that are adhered to for management to tell a dancer, we're no longer interested in you for next season, and for a dancer in kind to say, you know what, thank you very much for the opportunity, but I'm not going to renew my contract next year. So both parties have an, have an opportunity, opportunity to find an employer or find a, a dancer. So this is something that will actually serve you for the remainder of your dancing career as a exactly. professional. Get yeah. used to it early on. <laughs> right, no, it, it, again, all of these things we're talking about are life lessons indeed, not just, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, it, it all comes back to uh, do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. Golden rule. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think th th this is a great, um, uh, spot at which to kind of um, start wrapping up this conversation. Mm -hmm. But um, there's one more thing. All of our guests uh, at the end of our conversations, we ask to address their teenage self. So it could be an 11 year old self, it could be a 17 year old self. So uh, Peter, this is your camera right here. Uh, this is your <laughs> teenage Peter. And uh, it, if you could please. I would say do the splits every day <laughs> and push ups every day. Pretty simple, but it makes I a love difference. It. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And Cynthia, this is oh. this right here is your teenage self. Is there something you would like to tell your teenage self? I would know say now? to my teenage self, ask questions. There are no stupid questions. There are some stupid answers, but there are not no stupid questions because I refused to ask questions as a young person and I was so afraid that people would think I'm dumb if I had a question. And I say that to my students now. Ask. You know, you only have to ask. You may not get the answer you want to hear, but you will you'll get an answer. Our guest experts today were Peter Stark and Cynthia Harvey. I'm Sergey Gordiev and we'll see you next time on Ask the Expert.